Welcome to the section of Introduction to Angular 2, Building an Angular 2 App. We will begin by introducing Angular CLI, which makes creating a basic Angular 2 app very easy. Next, we will work with structural directives and class bindings to make our template more dynamic. We will then review creating services as well as mock data. Next, we will introduce Angular 2 forms and add one to our app. We will then discuss adding routing to our app. Finally, we will wrap things up by writing some unit tests. In this first video, we will learn about the Angular 2 command line interface. First, we will discuss the benefits of Angular CLI, specifically in relation to our manual process in installation and setup. We will then walk through creating a new project with the Angular CLI, We'll wrap things up by taking a look at the default structure of an application created with the CLI. CLI stands for Command Line Interface, and the Angular CLI makes it easy to create Angular 2 apps with a default set of configurations already built in. Out of the box, you will have a build system, now Webpack instead of System.js, infrastructure for both unit tests and end-to-end -end tests, and much more. All this with only one command on the command line. To learn more about Angular CLI and its many options and capabilities, visit the project's GitHub page. Much of what the CLI does for you, we set up manually in the installation and setup portion of this course. I highly recommend checking those videos out if you haven't already. I also recommend creating a couple projects manually before diving into the CLI. A knowledge of build tools, typing configurations, testing infrastructure, and other setup details goes a long way in truly having a solid understanding of the Angular 2 landscape. With that said, we are now going to install and run Angular CLI to create the project we will be working on throughout this section. To install Angular CLI, we are going to make use of, you guessed it, NPM. Run npm install g angular cli to install angular cli globally. I have already installed cli previously, so feel free to pause the video now as your installation finishes up. Now for the fun part. To create a new Angular 2 app, simply run ng new and then the name of your application. We're going to build a recipes app in this section, so let's run ng new recipes. This process can take a bit of time, so we will now jump ahead. That's it. Our app has been created. Let's jump into it with CD recipes. Now to run our app, we use another Angular CLI command, ng serve. We see here that our app is running on localhost 4200. Navigating to localhost colon 4200 in the browser reveals that our app is indeed up and running. Let's now take a look at the structure of the Angular 2 app, which we just created through the CLI. Open up our newly created project in your IDE of choice. We're going to walk through the app structure. You'll notice three folders. E2E, which contains configuration for end-to-end -end testing. We will not be diving into this in this course. Node modules, which we have seen before, and contains our project dependencies, such as necessary Angular libraries. And source, which contains all of our Angular 2 code, and which we'll take a much closer look at shortly. Below these folders, you'll notice several configuration files. We will be focusing on package.json, as well as the README. Take a look at the package.json file first. This should begin to look familiar at this point as we have looked at similar package.json files in the past. The scripts object reveals the defined command such as ng-serve to start our app and ng-test to run unit tests. You'll find the usual suspects for an Angular 2 app in the dependencies and dev dependencies including Angular Core Libraries, Jasmine and Karma Libraries for testing, as well as a TypeScript file. Now let's hop over 
to the README. The README provides us with some useful info and some important links to further details. We see commands for running our app in a development environment, building for production, and running both unit and end-to-end -end tests. We also notice a reference to scaffolding. We will be using scaffolding in this section to create services and components. Now let's take a look inside the source folder. You'll notice several familiar files such as tsconfig.json, a global styles file which we will not use as we will add styles to our individual components. You'll also find a very basic index.html here as well as main.ts. Main.ts bootstraps our app as we've done before. However, in this case, we first check to see if we should run the app in production mode. Our environment variables, which this if block uses, reside in the environments folder. The assets folder is where we would place any static assets such as image files. Finally, all of our Angular 2 code will live in the app folder. Currently, you'll find app.module.ts and a very simple app component here, which is what was loaded when we ran this app in the browser. Now that we have an Angular 2 app up and running and have familiarized ourselves with the app structure, let's add to our app component and make it more dynamic.